Today we'll be we'll begin our discussion uh, regarding thermodynamics. and its application toward piezoelectric materials. Uh, thermodynamics, essentially, uh, when we're talking about materials, it is the study on the analysis on how energy relates to properties and structure. So uh, today, or rather, you know, in this series, we're going to be focusing more on properties and applying this general uh, approach for understanding materials uh, to piezoelectric materials. And what we, you know, when we talk about energy, what we mean is, you know, obviously our traditional uh, energies that we've been speaking of throughout this course, which is strain energy, you know, deforming a material and getting, uh, you know, mechanical energy stored in it. Uh, secondly, electrical energy, uh, which will take the place of, uh, in the form of polarization. And next, thermal energy. Uh, which is just heat and temperature, and four is entropy, which is a more uh, abstract, sort of abstract topic, and it refers to a um, a sort of disorder in the material. We're going to start our discussion on uh, thermodynamics using an expression for free energy. So basically, we're going to have some function, and it's going to be a function of the different types of energies, strain energy, mechanical energy, uh, thermal and entropy, and we're going to relate that, and it's going to be related to the properties. So for example, it's going to be a function of polarization. So rather we can write like this is the function of polarization, a function of, you know, the strain in the material, the function of the applied electric field, and the stress is occurring, uh, you know, all of these will be equal to some polynomial And hopefully, uh, we, this polynomial can tell us how you know changing these properties uh, can affect the different physical states of the material, and we can learn uh, different uh, ideas from that. So, beginning with an expression for free energy. So we're, we say that first polarization. So this is the expression for free energy. Uh, and then right now we're only assuming it's dependent on polarization, uh, it is equal to a polynomial function. So this is, right now it's arbitrary. So it has odd and even components to it. And we just keep adding that down. And now what the trend is uh, and what the approach is that we use and we start with this general type of equation and we narrow it down to make it applicable and reflect uh, the material system that we're using. So what we're using is piezoelectric materials but more specifically ferroelectric materials. Namely materials which have a switchable uh, spontaneous polarization. So if we take our example a barium titanate and we draw its nice structure where the corner atoms are barium and its face centered atoms you know this is a tetragonal structure we're drawing right now and its face we'll draw that in green uh, it's going to be oxygen and we're going to have a face right here too and we're going to have a titanium atom, which will be in red. And the titanium, titanium atom can be either be displaced, uh, because it's a polar molecule, it can either be displaced above the midline of the material, or it could also be on the bottom. In the case where titanium is on the top. Let's draw that out. We have a positive charge on the top and a negative charge on the bottom. 
due to that displacement you have polarization going that way and if we assume our uh, coordinate system is uh, going up like this therefore we have a positive but on the other hand if we have a uh, the titanium metal on the other side uh, then we'll have a positive and negative therefore our spontaneous polarization will be going down and therefore uh, we will have a negative number but the, both of these orientations they're exactly equivalent. That is, the energy that should be stored in this equation, I mean this side and this side is the exact same. You know, you flip the you know, crystal uh, you know, lattice on its head and uh, you will get the exact same looking uh, structure. So really the polarizations or the energy due to them should be the same because the configuration is completely equivalent. And for example, if you have the uh, configuration where you have the polarization uh, or the rather the titanium atom displaced upwards in this case, according to this figure, and you applied an electric field, uh, you know, inducing more polarization, you would get, you know, more displacement, you would get some energy stored. And that would be exactly equivalent if you had the titanium atom on the bottom and you applied electric field the other way. So basically these um, two configurations are exactly equivalent. Uh, what that means is that if we have a polarization, aka this say, case, positive polarization, it should be equal to the case if we had a negative polarization, which is this case because they're both equivalent. And the only polynomials which can satisfy this equation without being zero are even. Uh, are even polynomials. So we have this square term, we'll have this a3 to the a4 to the p4 term. Or uh, because otherwise all of these um, you know all of these parameters which are odd, they cannot satisfy this equation except with their polynomials being equal to zero. Sorry, except with their coefficients being equal to zero. So therefore we can arrive at a simplified form of the equation. Given that all the even terms are the only ones remaining, we can rewrite it in a simpler form. So this equation now is more reflective of um, ferroelectric materials. And also another uh, interesting point is oh, something to think about is that look they're all even right. So another case is that the energy cannot vary linearly with polarization. Just think about one half CV squared. Usually all energy type of relationships which have to do with input stress, which have to do with input uh, electric field or polarization, they're depending on the squared. Term. So just as you know, think about think your macroscopic equations, uh, they're all depending on the square term. So this also makes sense in another way. Whereas when we're talking about temperature, and soon we're going to develop this equation with regards to how does uh, the energy change with regards to temperature. Temperature energy changes linearly, uh, you know, with the temperature, because it's it's sort of a different uh, type of parameter altogether. So uh, similarly, we can use our we can use these. Uh, you know, ideas to verify our uh, equations in development. So we'll now derive uh, uh, the free energy with regards to temperature as well. So the temperature portion of the free energy we can write as F sub T, and it'll be a function of the temperature, equals to B1 T plus B2 T squared and so on, as this says we had the uh, had the uh, uh, other case. So if we write both the um, free energy with regards to polarization and temperature, we'll obviously have um, FP. You know, and FP was just that other equation where we had uh, P squared A two P A four uh, P to the fourth. Uh, plus, here we'll have a FT, but now we're also going to introduce another type of <clears throat> equation, 
So when you have dependencies on both temperature and polarization, uh, there will be an interaction between them uh, when we use a expansion series. We have, we'll have this C uh, P, P squared. We'll have these coupling terms. And we can furthermore write, we can write T squared P squared. And that would be C2. So we can also develop another equation. We can call this FTP uh, just for the sake of trying to come up with names to describe things easier. Um, so this term is sort of, these terms are sort of coupling terms. And these are actually very interesting and very important um, for smart materials in piezoelectric, in describing piezoelectric material, uh, different phenomenon. In this case, where we have interaction between the polarization and the temperature, this is called, and this coupling is called piezoelectricity. So if we assume that we want to keep the uh, free energy constant, but essentially no work is being done on the material, uh, then, and we also would like to say that our temperature is changing. And, let's just, and, and actually we're only going to include this term right here, the first term, and that's mainly due to simplicity. So we only want to include as much physics as necessary in order to completely describe the equation and uh, I mean to completely describe the physics and we don't want uh, and uh, yep. So therefore uh, in this case only conserving this term if we increase the temperature in order for sorry this is not going to be zero this is going to be some constant number uh, we'll just call that uh, B okay or whatever so we change this temperature and in order to keep this free energy constant the polarization will have to change and decrease and if we increase the polarization uh, for example by applying an electric field we will have the temperature will have to increase so this is called pyroelectricity pyroelectricity is essentially changing temperature and that leads to polarization but the on, the on the other hand, if we change the temperature, if we change the polarization, for example, by applying an electric field, and we get a temperature change, which will occur according to this equation, uh, this is known as the electrical caloric effect. And these phenomena actually exist in the material. Uh, therefore, we need to leave these in. For example, a material which does not experience pyroelectricity or electrocaloric effect, we would assume that C is zero because this effect doesn't happen. And what we're, what we're going to find is that this term right here is going to be equal to the material property. Although in this case it's a little more complicated, uh, and uh, I'll describe um, how exactly these properties, you know, C1. And then for uh, the uh, ferro, I'm uh, sorry, for the free energy of from, due to the polarization, uh, we have these A terms, and how these all terms come together to describe, for example, the uh, dielectric permittivity, and how they come to together to describe uh, the piezoelectric effect and the compliance or the stiffness of the material. Uh, that will be uh, described in the following lecture. Thank you for watching.